Hey, hello, welcome to my channel. And if you're new, I just wanted to welcome you and let you know a little bit about my channel. Basically, I am a registered provisional psychologist. I've done a bachelor degree in communications, psychological science, and then a bachelor of science honors in psychology. And I am a practicing provisional psychologist at the moment. I use my YouTube channel to bring mental health awareness to everybody. So not everyone can afford to see a psychologist not everyone can afford the time and sometimes we just want to learn a bit more about psychology so i like to sort of explore and explain psychological terms in ways that we can all understand and in ways that we can all benefit from i also offer online support so it's affordable online support to those who need it you can make a booking using the link that's in the bio or just head to my website helpingmindsonline.com.au or my Instagram. Anyway, so what I wanted to talk to you about today is how trauma changes our bodies. So a lot of you might be wondering, you know, people that experience extreme trauma as a child, what are they being robbed of? What, what is being taken away from them? Not just in terms of psychologically, developmentally, emotionally, spiritually, cognitively, even educationally. There's just so many things that can be stolen from a child when they experience trauma, particularly when it is inflicted by the parent. What I'm gonna talk about is childhood trauma, which can be really triggering for some. If you are feeling triggered by this, please just turn it off. Seek help as well. I don't know where you're watching from, but if you're in Australia, we have Lifeline. So if you're feeling really triggered by the content of this video, please do contact Lifeline, because I am gonna be speaking about childhood trauma, including sexual trauma, physical trauma, emotional trauma, and essentially what happens to the body and how that changes our body as, as we progress from children to adults and how we can sort of correct that as an adult. So if your trauma is mild, if you're just simply interested, if you wanna help somebody that's been through trauma, then this video could really be beneficial for you. So when a child is traumatized by someone that they trust, or even if when they are traumatized through perhaps being a child of war, there are many different forms of trauma. What they're also being robbed of is healthy bodily functions. Essentially what I am saying is trauma can be associated with negative bodily ramifications that that child will need to live with for the rest of their life if they aren't aware of it and if they don't seek treatment and um, it can be treated. When I'm talking about trauma and how all of this happens, I'll explain it all. Let's pretend that you experience sexual trauma as a child. Now, don't think that incest rape is rare because unfortunately it isn't. We're talking about obviously there is fathers raping, um, brothers as well. Then we then we also have trusted friends of family. So um, whether it be just a family friend, teachers, like we all know the perpetrators of sexual assault to children. Just to make it crystal clear of how trauma is going to change your body. If you think of someone that's being sexually assaulted by a family member, their body is screaming stop. It's completely under threat. Be absolutely going into fight or flight mode, which was necessary for our ancestors in order to survive. So they saw a tiger or a lion or whatever it was going to eat them or maybe even just an, another tribe their body would experience a reaction where the heart contracts faster and harder raising your pulse rate and your blood pressure and sending more blood to your brain more blood to your muscles this makes you more alert more reactive to danger your blood sugar levels will increase which will provide you with an energy boost sweat glands activate and increase because they 
want to be prepared to cool you down after you've exerted yourself like as and like as I was showing you like your muscles become tense and ready to action ready ready for action sorry and you may even start to shake and you begin to breathe more rapidly just to bring more oxygen to your body your pupils dilate just to increase your field of vision your your intestines even empty either through vomiting or through nervous diarrhea just so that you're lighter and you're ready to run chemicals are even released into your blood to make your blood clot so that then if you have a cut you're not going to lose as much blood so essentially when you're in fight or flight, there is a whole physical reaction that takes over your body to prepare you for battle, to prepare you to survive. Now, if you're like laying there and this is all happening to you whilst you're being completely violated, often what will happen is you have to switch off mentally from all the things that is happening physiologically within your body and so you disconnect can you see how your mind and your body disconnect so you're going through this experience and you have to just shut off your mind and body and that basically can continue throughout life where you might be in the company of somebody and your mind is saying danger danger get away but you're so used to silencing that voice and you stay there so that's one of the contributing reasons of why women who have been um, exposed to trauma as children are often more likely to be sexually assaulted later on in life. So that's sort of to give you an understanding of how that happens. Now let's pretend that your um, trauma is emotional. So you've got a parent who is just verbally abusing you. Now, when this happens, like you do engage in the fight or flight as well, but then there's also a feeling of sadness, sorrow, loss of self-esteem, questioning yourself, pain, just pain, which is absolutely associated, of course, with sexual trauma too, but with um, verbal and emotional, it's often someone just screaming at you whilst you're sitting there as a child having to take it and listen to it. And unfortunately, because parents who do those sorts of things won't usually allow you to talk back, you just essentially sit there and take it. And sometimes the only defense a child has in that situation is to pretend that they're not in pain. So they're just like, you're, the parent is verbally abusing them, but the child will just sit there just like mute and it's their only way of defense but underneath within their body they're having that same physiological reaction their heart is breaking and they're just going through so much pain but they're not allowing their body to express that they're not allowing themselves to curl up into a ball and cry they're not allowing themselves to cry outwardly or say stop it you're hurting me they're just having to really disconnect from what the body wants to do and you're just having a, a huge disconnect as a way to cope and get through that experience and then again as you get older your body is telling you things and you've got this mind body disconnection now physical trauma as well physical assault is quite similar to both sexual and um, verbal or emotional assault where you're again fight or flight but how can you fight off someone that's bigger than you that's supposed to love you that's supposed to care for you so i hope that this is sort of explained to you the mind body connection and what it is essentially it is the vagus nerve and what we've found is that most bodily symptoms of childhood trauma link back to a weakening of the vagus nerve. Every time that your body screamed, no stops, I'm in pain, and you silenced it, that nerve just got weaker and weaker and weaker. The vagus nerve is, is a bunch of nerves actually that stems from the brain through to your organs. It's the pathway of communication from your brain to your nervous system and to your gut. It is the mind-body connection. The vagus nerve is the mind-body connection. And when that vagus nerve is weak, it's linked to high inflammation. It's linked to digestive issues. Have you ever noticed that somebody might always have chronic 
stomach aches or not even be able to control their, their um, bowel movement, it can be due to severe trauma as a child. It's also associated with chronic illness. If your vagus nerve is weak, you're just often stuck in, in that fight or flight mode. So you're just always alert, waiting for danger. Now on the other side, a strong vagus nerve is actually associated with feelings of well-being, strong emotional well-being, good physical health, good gut health, reliable bodily functions. So you, you're not going to be getting sick a lot. You're, when you need to go to the toilet, you just sort of go. You, you don't experience diarrhea, constipation, stomach pains, headaches, tension all of the things that are associated with trauma essentially. And you just um, have greater emotional stability too with a, a stronger vagus nerve because a lot of our emotions we feel throughout our entire body and everything is in sync and you're also not exposed to constant danger as well. You'll have the benefit of, of emotional stability. Now for those that have unfortunately been exposed to childhood trauma, and also, I just thought I might mention as well, I do a lot of work with people across the entire lifespan, and I have seen cases where a person has never experienced any ailments or any sort of problems or had a really just steady sort of a life, really emotionally stable, and they'll experience a trauma later on in life, and they will then experience the problems of a weakened vagus nerve and the problems of a weakened mind-body connection. So essentially, trauma can affect the mind, the body, can affect your brain at any stage of the lifetime. But today's video was obviously about the childhood trauma and realizing this as an adult and just trying to fix this as an adult. So there are ways to fix this. So firstly, what I would recommend that you try is because you may not be inclined to listen to your um, bodily sensations so you might have a friend who is dangerous and toxic and you just keep ignoring that if you're aware of that it might be time to start to distance yourself from people like that because all they're going to do is keep weakening your vagus nerve and your mind-body connection because every time that they perpetrate you they violate your boundaries and you don't listen to that voice then that's weakening that that nerve again. And then there are just simple practical exercises that you can do to strengthen the vagus nerve. Now I do know that there are actual hospital treatments that do this like manually or however hospital machines work I don't know. You may need to look into that I've just heard about it but anyway if you want to do this in your own home and strengthen your vagus nerve yourself here are some tips. Number one is cold showers. Now, I don't know why this works, but a lot of science backs this up. And there is, um, I've forgotten his name, but the Iceman, uh, something woof. Um, I'll put the link in the bio anyway. And he basically had lost his wife to, I think she committed suicide and he was left with I think like seven children to raise as a single father. So he experienced a severe trauma and he found that through exposing himself to extremely cold temperatures, he was able to access the reptilian part of the brain and achieve emotional stability. Um, he's actually able to fight off illnesses. So people have put him in experiments where they've actually injected an illness into his body and his body just fought it off. So, he obviously swears by exposure to cold temperatures and he also swears by, and this is also scientifically proven to help the vagus nerve, is deep breathing. Cause you're just, you're relaxing your body and you're reconnecting with your body. Because as I said earlier, when you're in that state of fight or flight, your breathing accelerates and sometimes you can even hold your breath. There's a lot of things that we actually do when we're in a state of stress and chronic stress that is 
directly related to our breathing. Another one, and I'm not making this up, is singing. And I don't know why singing helps a vagus nerve. Perhaps it's something to do with breathing again, just reconnecting with your voice, perhaps reconnecting with your body, your sounds. And then also like you're, you're working with your bodily organs being your voice box so you're manipulating it you're controlling it when you want to go higher when you want to go lower when you want to extend the note so just that reconnection with the body again strengthens the vagus nerve don't worry i won't start singing for you to demonstrate because I don't want you to stop watching um you also want to look at treating your gut health again like the connection with our stomach when we feel get really upset we feel sick to the stomach so correcting that through i think like acidophilus health the healthy digestive bacteria eating well those sorts of things and also eating well is telling your body that i'm going to do the right thing by you so that's that's helping to build the relationship i know that sounds weird but it does it does help consider some omega-3 fatty acids that's also really good for vagus nerve for gut health for your body health and again i just want to emphasize deep breathing exercises and mind and body movement so uh, a lot of people as well get a lot of benefit from singing in a choir because you're around people and you're moving together and you're singing so that's really great for stimulating the vagus nerve so that's really great for your emotional well-being. And there's also like those um, chi exercises from the Eastern medicine, like similar to yoga, but it's all just about rebalancing that connection because it, it has been broken during the trauma. So this is just a way to reharmonize the balance of the energy that's flowing through your body, flowing through your nerves, flowing through your mind. And I just want you to know as well, if you're a victim of trauma, that you were once powerless. And I'm so sorry that that happened to you. There's nothing I can ever say to take away the pain of what's happened, but you can take back some of that control now and you can start healing the damage and you can start reconnecting your mind and your body because they were once in sync. So you can reconnect that again. Thank you for staying with me. I know that was heavy. That's a lot heavier than most of my videos. A lot of people have experienced trauma and a lot of people want to know how has my trauma changed me physically? And then that physical um, and emotional link, it's, it's a cycle as well. So somebody violates you and then you ignore it, start to get a stomach ache, you ignore that. Somebody violates you your body sends a signal, I'm in danger, you ignore that. So you can see how it's just a cycle and it's up to you to, to break that now and you can. So again, thanks for staying with me today. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you um, are feeling triggered by this, there are support options within your country. If you wanna reach out and speak to me, you can as well. So thank you again, everyone. It was great to spend some time with you and I hope you've learned everything that you need to learn about your vagus nerve and that you're gonna consider those cold showers. They're blooming awful. I have one every morning, but definitely see a doctor though. I don't want people, get, like it's not for everybody. So it's something that you can build up to gradually as well. But as always, my advice is just, is just advice. I don't know your individual situation. Speak to your GP, speak to your psychologist, your psychiatrist, and for some general psychological guidance and unpacking and knowledge, tune in with me next week.